I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Gentlemen, any additions or deletions to the agenda? No, sir. None. I'd like to move number 17 to the action agenda without objection. Number 17. All righty. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the last public business meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All righty. Item number one, we have Allegheny County Recycling Site Steward Appreciation. Ms. Wigfield. Hi. Good evening. Um, so as recycling coordinator, I kind of manage the Allegheny County Solid Waste Management Board, which was established on December 19th, 1996. So on December 19th, it'll be celebrating its 20th anniversary. Um, this board has 15 members and is very active. We have monthly meetings. We hold the recycling events for Allegheny County. Um, the events wouldn't be possible without the board members volunteering and helping organize the events. Um, so to commemorate this anniversary, uh, the Allegheny County Commissioners and the Solid Waste Management Board would like to recognize the site, the owners of the sites for the public recycling bins, like the big metal boxes uh, for cans, newspapers, magazines, uh, and various other recyclables. Uh, see, these sites are uh, make, there's 13 sites total and they're available for public recycling in Allegheny County. And some of the sites have been around for over 20 years. So um, I want to thank everybody who's allowed us to recycle on their property um, for any period of time. So I'm going to go quickly through the list that I have. So um, there's a site at Bel Air Plaza. I don't have anybody here today to accept that. Um, Penmar Recycling, they help steward the one out into the rear of the building. Uh, Allegheny College of Maryland. Uh, yeah, if you're here for that. Can you pull the glass for me? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Stand up here for me. Okay. That'd be great. Um, maybe right there. Okay. Thank you. And then Martin's Food. Um, do you have Stephen James for that? And then uh, the landfill, I have John Wozinski uh, here. And then uh, we also have one at uh, on National Highway by Staples um, that they couldn't be here this evening. We also have one at Walmart. Um, and we also have a bin behind Town Hall and Lona Pony. Um, we have one at Mount Savage Recreational Park. Uh, that one's actually been around the longest. It's been around for 25 years, which I think is really cool um, that it's been available then. Thank you, Dan. And last but not least, we have uh, been at the Town Hall parking lot in Westernport. There he is. I do want to say these frames are actually made out of uh, recycled newspaper composite with soy for like coloring. So I think that's pretty cool. Most of the recycling sites have at least cans and newspapers at the very least. So it's nice that a commodity was used to make the, like the plaque frame. So anyway, I want to thank you very much for helping. Yeah, very good. Well, you guys have anything to say? Yes. I wanted it before they leave. We will. Any, anything for you guys? Or? Just uh, I appreciate everything you do. Recycling is really important for the county, important statewide, and actually we have a better recycling uh, report than any place else in the state, I believe. So. Oh, thank you. Yes, we hit our goal for the last several years easily. Yeah. That's thanks to you guys. We yeah, appreciate totally. it. Yeah, totally. And hard to tell how many times Danny's been recycled. <laughs> 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 Would you go and get a picture of them up? Please, please. 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 They're coming up here. Please. Please. Come on. Come on up. Get one up.
one for the official. I better start paying the official. No, no, you're. I stand beside you a little bit. You can't. I appreciate that. See you. Oh, it's not. I'm the only one not in green. How's it going? HB. May I? If you want to get on the list. Okay, do we need all to be closer together and sideways so we can get everyone in the boat? Yeah. Does that make any difference? Just the same one way as the other. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. I'm messing everything up. Yeah. We're going to put you on the end. Okay. Jason. <laughs> All right. Item number two, we have resolution 16-22, Rocky Gap slot allocation. Mr. Bennett. Good evening. Well, tonight we have in front of you um, a request to amend the, the Rocky Gap slots allocation. As you know, we enacted this a couple of years ago and we're required to meet annually with our local development council. Um, we did that November 14th, our group met, and we have two changes we want to bring to you for tonight. Um, first change is a really simple one. That would simply be to move the date of the resolution out to December 31st, 2017, to give us one more year um, of our spending plan. And then we have one actual change to the spending plan. We'd like to, uh, the, the committee unanimously uh, move to allocate $50,000 to our local law enforcement agencies to go towards the purchase of bulletproof vests. Um, it was brought to our attention that those vests cost upwards of $1,000 a piece, and it's difficult for all these agencies to come up with that money in a lump to replace these vests. So what we're going to do is form a subcommittee of our own development council, and we can award the $50,000 annually to the agency that needs it, or agencies, they can do it divided however they want. Um, so those are the only changes we're looking for at this point. Um, if, if you like, I'll give you a quick rundown of where we stand right now as far as spending plan. Please. Um, we've budgeted $1.4 million for this fiscal year. Um, that's the estimate the state's given us, and so, so far we're pretty well on target for that. If that holds true, we'll be able to allocate $360,000 to Allegheny College of Maryland for the scholarship. Uh, another 200000 to Frostburg State, also for the scholarship. Um, $80,000 to our own PAYGO fund here for capital projects. $80,000 to be earmarked for Board of Ed capital projects. Fifteen grand to the Western Maryland Food Bank, which was our last change the last time we came to you. Um, the $50,000 for, for law enforcement agencies. And then finally, and, and what's now the biggest piece, uh, would be $690,000 for our fire companies works out to be $10,000 for first responders at Rocky Gap to be divided amongst the responders, and then um, roughly $26,000 per company would be distributed. So that's our spending plan as of now. We, we're required to meet every year, so we'll, we'll meet again next year and analyze this again and see if there's any new requests. Um, but as of now, that's our spending plan. Uh, per state law, we recommend to you commissioners and it's up to you commissioners to approve. And if you do, this this new plan will be effective uh, January 1. Well, I think it's all money extremely well uh, spent. I'll make a motion that we accept the plan. And I agree. So it's second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Thank Jason. Thanks, sir. <laughs> all right. Item number three, Flux Mill Scenic Overlook. Mr. Okay. Kale. Follix? Folks. Folks. I wasn't around back then. <laughs> well, I was. I knew that. That's right. <laughs> Um, 
a while back to see how we uh, administration approached us about this is a historical site and maybe some people who know more about it can tell you something about it in a minute. But they approached us. They would uh, design and pay for a low maintenance facility for the parking lot and a trail and an overlook for uh, this. It was a Civil War battle. And um, they wanted us to do an MOU with the state. They would pay it. We'd have no money in this at all. They do the design and the construction. And then we would maintain it. And the Civil War Roundtable approached us. They would, they would do an MOU. So I'm asking for two things. One would do an MOU with the state to do construction of the project. And then we would do an MOU with the Civil War Roundtable to maintain the structure. And it just so happens that uh, the ex-director of public works for Allegheny County <laughs> <laughs> um, who currently still works for us is a member of the Civil War Roundtable and 20 other volunteer agencies. <laughs> and I'm going to let him come up here and exact, uh, uh, say a little bit more about the, the battle and also what we plan on doing there. And we plan on trying to build a low maintenance facility too that won't have a whole lot of work to do. So. There were uh, a half dozen or so members of the Civil War Roundtable in the audience here with me tonight. In the Battle of Folks Mill, we call it the Battle that Saved Cumberland. In 1864, General McCausland, the Confederate uh, general, was coming to Cumberland uh, for the purpose of disrupting the railroad station and possibly burning the city. Two days prior to this, he had burned the uh, city of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. So the uh, Folks Mill is actually a foundation that's also left of the mill. It's in pretty bad condition. It's owned by State Highway. Uh, they've determined that it's not feasible to really try to reconstitute the mill or the foundation. So what we've come up with is a plan to develop a little parking area and a uh, small trail with an overlook that's on the battlefield site. And as Paul explained, the State Highway thinks they have funding to do that, and our group is willing to uh, take over the maintenance responsibilities once it's built. So I'm glad to answer any other questions you might have. <clears throat> Excuse me. Where is it located, Steve? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's located uh, along uh, Route uh, 68, uh, the I-68, right at uh, where Evans Creek crosses underneath I-68. You know, from Mason's Barn. Yeah. The old Mason's Barn. Yeah. And the Pacini's Restaurant. In fact, uh, the right. Pacini's Restaurant uh, building was actually hit uh, by cannon fire in the, during the battle in 1864. How big a piece of ground is it? It's a half an acre. Okay. With, uh, with about a 300 or 400 uh, foot trail, 10 foot wide trail that goes off of it. It takes you out to a little bit of an overlook. Uh, probably the <clears> biggest <throat> thing is it's in the middle of the battle site. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, in the basket, of maybe to raise your hand, the other members are here tonight. Uh, I'm huh. sure you yeah. recognize Harvey May, the former city councilman. So. Wonderful. Okay. Any further discussion? I believe you had something out at. Uh, Shrine Club we last did. Year. We had the 150th yeah. uh, anniversary, and uh, it was actually, I guess it's been two years ago now, August two of uh, uh, 14. And we had quite a, a quite a ceremony out there, and uh, it was real nice and it was well attended. So yeah, I was out there. The, uh, the actual mill site good. itself is on the National Register of Historic Places. So it's an important site. I make a motion when we move ahead with this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, item number four, Upper Potomac Industrial Park. Um, this is a request to approve an award of contract. Whitney. Hello. Hi. Um, due to the new floodplain maps coming out or in this next year, will cause some modifications need to be done to the levy. So we put out to bid for this contract, and bids were open on November 15th. And the low bidder was Carl Belt at $117,525, and I am asking for the approval of the award of this contract. Any discussion? If I remember right, that flood was a man-made flood due to human error, wasn't it? Um, and we've been fixing it ever since. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. I haven't been here long enough to know the true history. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll make a motion that we set fix up. Uh, Second. Accept it and award item four. Good project. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Jenny. Item number five, we have South Cumberland Library renovation request for furniture and shelving. Mr. Patterson. Settle down, John. <laughs> I asked John to be here tonight. Commissioners, uh, as you're aware, we're under construction at South Cumberland Library. Uh, at this point in time, you know, we're about 40% complete, hoping to have the, the library finished by May and then um, back open by July 1st. 
um, included with the project is, is new shelving and furnishings for, for the new library. Uh, the shelving and furnishings um, are eligible under the state funding, and the state has 90% in this. The county has 10. This project has been included in the CIP, and I've, I've asked John to be here tonight to explain a little bit about how he went about vetting the, the furniture and shelving part of this. Um, well, as you know, thanks to the hard work of Adam and other county staff, we are um, moving right along on this project. And I think it was the right week to put the windows in and button it up on this cold day. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, <clears throat> the furnishings list, uh, we bid the package, um, two, pro two packages. The first package was the furnishings, and that list was specified by the uh, architectural firm so that it uh, ensured continuity with the overall building design. And the second package was for the shelving components. We were reusing as much of the shelving that was in the building as we possibly can. Um, because of the complexities of uh, bidding out individual pieces of furniture, we sought to use state contracts, uh, which are, as you know, uh, pricing and discounts have already been competitively bid uh, by a state uh, agency or a county uh, agency. Um, for the furnishings, we had received three bids from state contracts or uh, cooperative purchasing agreement vendors. For the shelving components, we received two bids simply because there's fewer companies that sell library shelving. Um, the, uh, we're recommending that the furnishings contract be awarded to Duran of Owings Mills, Maryland for the amount of $65,951, and we're recommending that the award uh, for the shelving components be awarded to Melos of Hampton, Virginia uh, for a cost of $53,029. Both Duran and Melos uh, were awarded Mid-Atlantic Purchasing Team uh, contracts for their respective lines of products of which we're going to buy for the library. So with that, thank you. That great. Clear now? Thanks, John. Thank and the, these library capital projects are great because we get our bang for the buck. Um, thank you, yes. Uh, the, the furnishings, 65000 and 53000 only 10% comes from the county. The rest right. comes from state funding. So that's, that's great for us. Plus, I would really suggest everybody go down to see that library once it's finished. It's uh, quite an, uh, an achievement to be done down there. It is startling, so thank you. Great. Thanks, John. I'll make a motion. We move ahead. <coughs> this. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Item number six, we have Iron Rail Street, Mount Savage. Mr. Patterson. Okay, gentlemen, as you're aware, uh, State Highway proposes to replace a bridge in town. I believe in calendar year 2018, they've, uh, they've reached out to the county requesting assistance on a detour route. The detour route would be Iron Rail Street. Iron Rail Street is a county route currently would not accommodate two-way traffic. So they're requesting our assistance where we would go forward, design the improvements necessary to accommodate the detour. Uh, they would reimburse for the engineering permitting uh, and construction and utility relocation needed on Iron Rail Street. So the staff report before you tonight is uh, just the first step in this, whereas you would entertain the idea of going into an MOU with State Highway to be able to cover this project. Any questions? None. It's going all the way to Route 36? It's going around, right? The, the detour is iron rail. Yes, yeah. it, it would cover from 36 on the northwestern end to the southeastern end. I was just wondering if the telephone pole was going to stay in the middle of the road. <laughs> Have to move them. Good. That's yes. a good idea. <laughs> So I'll make a motion. We approve item number six. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thanks, Adam. Thank you very much. We have an Allegheny County Community Enhancement Program, our blight removal projects. Mr. Nedved. Uh, commissioners, um, the Western Port Mayor and Town Council respectfully requested consideration of funding from the Allegheny County Community Enhancement Program to demolish dilapidated buildings located at 210 Reardon Road, 411 Vine Street, 113 Wood Street, and 104 Main Street. 
the Allegheny County Commissioners already own the first three houses, and the Mayor and Council of Western Port owns the remaining house at 104 Main Street. Therefore, the project is only for the, for the demolition of the four houses and out any outbuildings on the lots, and not for any acquisition costs. Uh, considering the Allegheny County Commissioners own three of the houses, the Town of Westernport is only requesting $2,800 for the demolition cost and the estimated $900 for landfill cost for 104 Main Street. As per the approved guidelines for the program, grant amounts below $15,000 do not require a match. The program uses revolving building funds as a source. At this time, we're asking that the board approve paying $15,300 in demolition costs and an estimated $3,600 in landfill costs for the four houses in the town of Westernport from the program. Um, and I'd also like to recognize that Mayor Laffey's here. Um, and if you have any questions for me. It's exactly the kind of projects we uh, designed this program for. So Absolutely. Move ahead with Mayor, you have anything? <coughs> Come on up. I would just like to thank the county for all the help they give the town of Western Port, and uh, especially Dave Nevitt, who came to Western Port, and we rode around and looked at these four particular houses and other houses in Western Port that will probably, probably be on the list in, in the future. Great. And uh, this is uh, very important to us because we have uh, a lot of dilapidated houses in town. Um, we also have a couple houses that uh, we would like to see refurbished. Uh, one house in particular, it's not on this list, but it's on Maryland Avenue, it's a row house. And it's uh, like a third of the way up from, from the end and uh, there's really no way it can be tore down. I'd like to see it renovated, but I, the way things are going, it's probably going to be up for taxes next year. Great. So it looks like the county will end up owning that one too. But um, again, I appreciate everything the county does for us. Uh, all the county employees have just been just been great to us. Every time I call, they're friendly. They help us, and uh, it, it's a great working relationship we have. Uh, this always wasn't the case, but uh, for the last six or eight years, it's, it's been um, very nice. To, uh, to work with these guys, and um, also I'd like to thank Commissioner Valentine and Commissioner Brody for helping us light our Christmas tree this year. <laughs> it was a pleasure to have you in town, and we appreciate you being in our parade and coming to our meetings, and you're, you're a big help to us, and we just appreciate but you it. you almost gave us a heart attack. You didn't like the picture? Five minutes after we lit the tree, all the lights went out. <laughs> we thought they were going to blame I, us I for I can breaking. tell you that was on purpose, but I won't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I will have to tell you those pictures, I, we kind of doctored those up a little bit so they look better. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, thank you very much. Thanks well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion. We move forward with this. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Thank you David. All right. Um, Item number eight, we have Motorola Radio Purchase. Mr. DeVore. This is a biggie. Mm -hmm. Good evening, Commissioner. Sir. Well, uh, what you have before you is a request for us to uh, begin the process of proceeding with our migration onto the state radio system. And I will tell you that this is certainly uh, a monumental day for first responders in Allegheny County. By approving this expenditure, you will be authorizing the single largest non-facilities related capital project in the history of fire EMS and I believe law enforcement in Allegheny County. I understand up to this date, uh, over the last 20 years, your capital investment into the existing radio system has only been about $600,000. But as you may recall, uh, we notified you back in 2015 that we were experiencing a potential issue with our current radio system and that through the, the corporate process, our existing provider, uh, we are going to lose uh, support and the ability to purchase additional equipment. Ironically, that uh, support and equipment ended today. So with that in mind, I would just like to point out that two weeks ago, we experienced what we could consider one of those catastrophic issues and we were able to take advantage of that support. We had to pull cards out of our radio system at uh, uh, BW and send them back for some programming by the vendor. 
Uh, so we're hoping to be able to uh, nurse the system into the fall when we can cut over onto the state system. But I want to also point out a couple other things, too, that it goes without saying. Communications is one of the biggest and most important components to uh, mitigating emergency situations. And we found that out in the World Trade Center where the inability for police and fire to communicate potentially costs firefighters their lives. So going into this, uh, you know, I looked at this radio system project and uh, my staff as well, I believe Communications Chief Bennett's in the room, we looked at it with uh, three focuses and that was one, we have a responsibility to keep the citizens of this county safe. But we also have an equal responsibility to keep the first responders in this county safe. But representing that we're utilizing taxpayer dollars, we have a right to be fiscally responsible with those dollars moving forward. So I'd like to give you an overview of the initial system so you know what we are moving away from. First of all, our current system is not interoperable. Uh, we communicate more with organizations out of state than we do organizations within our own state made and that's purely based on the geography of Maryland sitting out here in the panhandle. Secondly, we are not P25 compatible. P25 is the industry standard that allows radio systems to talk together and communicate and we cannot do that at this point. The standard now has moved to digital communications and we are still currently on an analog system which has us handicapped. And as I indicated before, uh, support and parts, that all ended today. So we have what we have in reserve in hopes of being able to get this system through to the fall. And understanding that our present system that we installed was only meant to serve as a bridge until we could move over onto the state system once it came out. So with that in mind, um, we had a decision to make knowing all those factors. And that was, do we look at a standalone radio system for the county? Or do we look at moving on to the statewide system that was coming? And tell you what would happen with the standalone system is that we would bear all the cost uh, in future repairs and maintenance of the system. We'd still need to be compliant with the industry standards. And I can give you an example of a standalone system, and that was neighboring Washington County, who installed a standalone system about seven years ago. And uh, their investment at that point was $25 million. Now with the state system moving forward, we recognize that the state is paying for the repairs and the equipment at the tower sites. That's no longer our responsibility. We are only responsible for purchasing the mobile radios and the portable radios, which is before you tonight. And we will become, for the first time, fully interoperable with all our neighboring jurisdictions, not only those in Maryland, but also those in Pennsylvania and West Virginia. But, as I said before, we also were required to be physically responsible in this. And I just want to let you know that we did that. Uh, moving forward, we went from a fleet of 1,500 radios, and we've scaled the, the fire and EMS service down to 1,000. And we based that on national standards that indicated how many per piece of apparatus. I want to also point out that we negotiated a lot with our vendors, and I'm not sure if we have representatives from our vendors in here tonight, but, yeah. but what I can tell you is, is that what we projected in the capital budget and what was improved, we expect this project to come in about 20% below cost, and mm -hmm. that would be about a $1.5 million savings. And I'll just conclude with my last comment, and I do have Chief Bunnett here to, to verify, our last comment was to the vendor. We have a deal only if you can guarantee us that we got the best deal for the taxpayers of Allegheny County. So moving forward, I recognize that $6 million is a huge investment. But as I stated above, you know, we've looked at we're responsible for the citizen safety, for the first responder safety, and also for those tax dollars. And I think what we've done is, is that we've uh, achieved all three of those goals. So it's my recommendation tonight that uh, you would proceed with the purchase of the mobile and portable radios from Motorola Solutions in the amount of $6,050,000 $50,693. Okay. Dick, just, just one question. How long have we had the, the current system? The current system, 
The current system came into play right around 2000, um, and we still have components of the low band system, which was implemented in, well, that predates me, and I'm 1983. So, Tim, how about it? Do you know? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm guessing the low band system was probably the mid 70s or something wow. in that case. So, we have certainly got our our fair, fair use out of the current system. So we're expecting a, at least a 20-year life expectancy out of these new systems? We are going to stretch it just as very long as what we can, but the one benefit that we have over a lot of other jurisdictions is, is that our equipment is going to be consistent across the board. So we are going to be able to swap out as we go. So a unit experiences difficulty. Instead of it trying to get repaired one site, we are taking a radio out, swapping them out, and then getting them back in service. Plus the units, you know, and even with the law enforcement, even though they may be with the city of Cumberland or the city of Frostburg or whatever the case, those units are interchangeable. Well, when, when we spend this amount of money, there's a couple things, you know, you, you should consider. And number one is, is it needed and is it necessary? And in this case, it most certainly is. Um, the, the other things that I, I always make sure we look at is, is it a one-time cost, or are we going to be doing this every couple of years? And again, this, this is this is a long-term investment. And then, most importantly, can we afford it? And we, we've been able to put it in our uh, our debt plan, and uh, we'll be borrowing the money uh, next spring, and uh, we'll keep it under our, our debt limit. So, with all of that, I, I think we're we're good to go, and it's it's something that, that's sorely needed in the county. So I guess the only question I got is how many first responders and EMTs we got in here tonight? Because I'm going to make this motion for item eight. So if Dave Everly falls over, please help him out. So there's the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Dave. Let's keep the momentum rolling. <laughs> yeah. Not after that, sir. That's right. We're, we're out of money. Quit yeah. Yeah. Four more, Dick. <laughs> yeah, we're out of. But yeah, that's right. We're out of money now. Uh, <laughs> item number nine is the CAD server replacement. CAD server replacement. Okay. As you're aware, the um, 911 Joint Communication Center operates a computer-aided dispatch system. Um, that system's the backbone of what we do, or what they do, as far as dispatch. And as with all uh, computer equipment, we go through a life cycle replacement process. And that server, which is utilized for the CAD uh, system, is now up for replacement. Uh, that particular server comes from a very specific manufacturer that has a partnership with um, the vendor. And that is uh, Stratus Technologies. And we're recommending that the commissioners proceed with replacement of that server at a cost of $36,665.98. And that is budgeted in as part of our capital. Any discussion? Uh, just one question, Doug. Uh, at MACO, it was brought up that Verizon is pulling out of servicing 911. Mm -hmm. and because the big thing right now is mm -hmm. people are making calls on cell phones or even going through their computers making uh, calls. And a lot of systems won't, won't take those calls. And right. Is this going to be a, an upgrade to work? Well, we'll be able to do that, or who's going to take over after Verizon? We, have we run two parallel systems. We run the telephone system, and then we run the system that processes the call after we receive. The issue with Verizon sits on the telephone side of the system, and presently the state's going out to RFP to look for a vendor who will come in to be able to maintain it. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of points that, of concern for us, and the first one is, A, how are they going to pay for it? which I'm hoping they don't take existing 911 dollars that's already coming out to the counties to pay for it. And then the other point of concern is, is that as a result of uh, cell phones and landline phones, people are moving away from having phones in their houses. As a result of that, we're seeing a decline in the local 911 monies coming back to the counties. So it's sort of like it has handcuffed us. but. Uh, Chief Bennett has positioned us well to be able to move on to the next generation of 911 for the center. Is there a motion? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item number 10, LaVale Rescue Squad EMS Post Agreement MOU. Uh, commissioners, as you're aware, we, uh, the EMS division works cooperatively with the uh, volunteer uh, 
EMS service out there, uh, providing service to our citizens. And what we do is we supplement the staff that the volunteers, uh, we supplement the volunteers. Uh, in this particular case, uh, LaVale went through a pretty significant change. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Mr. May, who has been a longtime fixture at that rescue squad, is um, no longer uh, responding when EMS calls at this particular point in time. And the squads felt it necessary that they need to fill the void moving forward. They've asked us to hire an a or a BLS provider to uh, work with the ALS provider that we currently have there so that they have a full career staff in daytime hours. Uh, under that current agreement, LaVale would agree to reimburse the county for all costs associated with that uh, hiring. So it's our recommendation to proceed with uh, the hosting agreement with uh, LaVale Rescue Squad. Is that, is that typical that they would reimburse us for that? We have yeah. partnerships like this, and uh, you know, I think we're probably poised to begin to reevaluate our overall delivery sure. method for EMS, but uh, places like that where we build those partnerships Sure. It's a very strong partnership. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item number 11 is cardiac monitors and defibrillators. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, over the last couple of years, I've come before you and asked uh, for your uh, permission to enter into agreements with some of our first responder organizations. And this involves uh, leveraging different sources to be able to drive the cost of life pack monitors down. Uh, many of our squads have begun the process of replacing the LifePak 12s with the new LifePak 15 uh, because the vendor has discontinued support on the older models. So in order to be able to do this, we've, we've utilized uh, some uh, different programs to be able to accomplish it. Uh, we work with a 50-50 state grant program. Uh, we receive trade discounts for the old equipment that we turn in. Because we're buying in bulk, we get uh, discounts for multi-unit purchases. Plus, we're also attaching to the Maryland State contract. And we accomplish those things by the county assuming the role as the project manager. In this particular case, we reach out, we do all the procurement, we get the grant reimbursement, and then the squads reimburse us for the final cost associated with that. Um, typically, what ends up happening is a $40,000 heart monitor, we can drive the price down below $20,000 by utilizing these programs. Uh, this year, uh, we have Crescent Town Fire Department, Georges Creek Ambulance Service, Flintstone Fire Department all participating, plus the county. Uh, we are replacing one of our monitors under this program. Uh, the total cost on this will be $126,317, and I will note that the county's portion of this has already been included in our capital budget. So it's our recommendation that uh, you authorize the procurement of uh, the life pack monitors from physical control for $126,317. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> All righty. Jumping ahead to item number 17, uh, Department of Emergency Services vehicle purchase. Okay. You want it? Okay. Go ahead, Richard. Okay. Uh, what you have before you tonight, commissioners, is a request uh, for the purchase of Three vehicles off state bid list. Uh, we're requesting to purchase three 2017 Ford Explorers, and uh, they come in with a, a price of $36,729. With that, some of the components that we look at on those vehicles is we've, uh, we're looking for all-wheel drive vehicles, which is an absolute necessity for us to be able to get into tower sites and such in bad weather. Uh, we look for heavy-duty electrical <coughs> systems to support the communications platform that we install in those vehicles. And they also come with additional uh, interior cabling, the appropriate warning devices, appropriate safety equipment. All those these, these uh, vehicles are identified as police interceptors. We do not obtain the larger motors that typically come in the patrol type vehicles. Uh, our sole purpose in moving in this direction is because of the need for the enhanced electrical system that comes along with it. Now, the vehicles that are being replaced, uh, a 2002 Ford Crown Victoria in which uh, the motor locked and it has already been uh, surplused out and sold in the Sheriff's Department auction. That vehicle was obtained surplus through Maryland Trans Transportation Authority. Mm -hmm. A 2006 Ford Expedition, this vehicle was obtained through surplus property from the Sheriff's Office. It currently has 148,000 miles on it and is currently using three quarts of motor oil a month. 
uh, the past three years, we've invested well, thirteen thousand dollars in keeping the vehicle on the road, and once it concludes its service, we will be surplusing this vehicle out. The other vehicle will be a 2006 Ford Expedition. This vehicle was purchased new in 2006 under a grant program uh, provided to the county. Currently has 170,000 miles on it. Uh, in the past three years, we've invested just shy of $20,000 keeping it on the road. And at this point, our plan is to uh, assign this to a low grade role in the EMS field, uh, working with our providers. All the three new vehicles that are purchased are identical vehicles, and we're moving in that direction that allows us to interchange the vehicles within our fleet without worrying about how they're equipped. Um, at this point, you know, I'm open for questions. Uh, the total package is 110187 Dick, all this money was already approved in our budget all those for have already been 2017. In capital budget. I just don't like buying vehicles, especially when, when the commissioners and the administrators using a 08 Taurus split between the four of us. Um, so, so it I runs good. What, I have a really nifty 2006 Ford Expedition I can send yeah. bigger way. <laughs> and I would say the use of their vehicles is much more important than the commissioners going out in the park lot and take a county car. I take my own car any place where we go. And to have emergency vehicles that age and that condition, you take, we spend $20,000 a year to keep a vehicle on the road. Yeah, that's Two dumb. years' time, we've got the price of a new vehicle. I don't like junk, period, regardless whether it's ours or yours or anyone. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> Throwing good money at bad, and with that, I'll make a motion that we approve and item I'll, number 17. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No more of this term, Dick. <laughs> now, Dick, before you do go down, because it was, it's been said in the past that the Commissioners have not been really very supportive of fire and EMS. We've just run through a total of how much? A little better than seven million dollars tonight. Right around seven million dollars, and that I would is also, a truckload of money. I would yeah. also like to take this opportunity to publicly thank you for the Rocky Gap funds. <clears throat> the projection holds true as what Jason has indicated. Twenty-six thousand dollars a year is pretty close to being an apparatus payment for some of these departments in here, and that was certainly a. a a strong financial shot in the arm nice. that our organizations have been looking for. All righty. Thanks. Thank Dick. you, sir. Thank you, Dick. Thank you. Thank you very much. You earned your money tonight. <laughs> no, he earned our money. Yeah, tonight. that's right. <laughs> Seven million bucks worth. Uh, wow. our, our consent agenda, Mr. Eberly. Commissioners, uh, tonight we now have six items left on the consent agenda for possible action. Motion uh, number 12 is actually a motion to appoint Richard Soderman to serve a two-year term on the county's uh, Solid Waste Management Board. Item 13 is a motion to reappoint uh, both Jim Martin and Bob Smith to the county's Building Codes Appeals Board. Item 14 is a motion to abate taxes on two properties being acquired by the Marin City Council of Cumberland and scheduled for demolition. Item 15 is a motion declaring surplus, a vehicle currently assigned to the Allegheny County Sheriff's Office. Item 16 is a motion declaring surplus, three properties acquired by the county through the tax sale process. Item 18 is a motion to approve a travel request for the county's Fair Week staff so they can attend the Pennsylvania Fair Convention in January. And I do believe this is where they get their acts set up for the fair. And That's where they finalize those acts. Big Mm -hmm. It is. I, uh, I make a motion we accept the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Rudd. I got nothing. No shout outs? Nothing. Ain't. Okay. Mr. Everly. Commissioners, it will be three weeks until we get the opportunity to meet again. So I'd like to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Mr. Valentine. Uh, just a few real quick things. Uh, the winter Mako was a very good event again this year. There's a lot of uh, state issues out there that have a huge effect on Allegheny County, such as the transportation bill. Uh, yeah, the state passed a bill last year that by the county is known as the roadkill bill because if this bill stays in place, Allegheny County won't get a dollar's worth of road construction money for probably a couple of decades. Uh, MACO has taken this as one of the number one priorities to get that bill killed. Um, 
the governor is 100 percent dedicated to get rid of that bill, having it rewritten. And the shame of it is that bill was a political move. It had nothing to do with doing the right thing with road construction, strictly a political move. So um, we're fortunate to have the support of MACO on something like that. And uh, I had the opportunity to, to have supper with and then again meet the following day with Del McCorry and his wife. And uh, we're moving forward for another five years at Del Fest. And uh, they really want to thank our Public Works Department, Adam and Paul, with all the work that's done out at the fairgrounds for them. And uh, people need to pay attention to how much money the McCorys bring back to this county and give to uh, all the nonprofits. And they're really helping with uh, improvements at the fairgrounds, too. So, Del Fest has been a real godsend to us. Wonderful. Commissioner Brody. Yes, sir. I'll keep this brief because I know we have someone that has a very special place to go tonight. First of all, I thank all the fire and EMS guys for coming out tonight. I most certainly appreciate it. It's good to see all of you here. Uh, you know, 95 percent of you I all know personally, so this is great to have a, a room full of you people. And some two of them here I've known for 40 plus years, so that, I really appreciate seeing them here. It's very nice to see that uh, Western Port represented here, Mayor. Thank you again. And it's very good to, to see Mr. Warren Foote and the new town administrator from the town of Coney here. So welcome, sir. It, we're pleased to have you. And with that being said, I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, and I hope that you guys, the fire and EMS system, if you don't have to go anywhere that day, I'll be tickled to death, and I'll get my Christmas wish. So, <laughs> so with that, we'll see you at the next one, sir. And the sheriff's here this evening. Oh, he doesn't and if, count. He doesn't. if everyone's good, the sheriff will personally deliver them something for Christmas. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 With that, we're, we'll, be, we'll come back in January. Um, the state is facing some some budget shortfalls, and uh, that that's likely going to extend to us. Um, if, if tax revenues are down statewide, they're they're probably down here too. So. We'll be back in, in three weeks, and we'll get geared up for uh, budgeting in the legislative session, and uh, we're, we're going to make sure that we govern in a way that, that doesn't raise taxes when uh, keep spending in check, and that you all can be proud of uh, your local government. So with that, thank you, and, and thanks for the staff for another year here. And uh, our next meeting will be Thursday, January 5th, 2017, 5 o'clock. Thank you.